A little bit different than normal. A little bit different than normal. I want to bring a truth here tonight. I think everybody would help everybody in our church. We want everybody to look at this. Uh, we're starting tonight in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So get your Bibles out and get them ready. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Here this evening. Now I'm, uh, I'm going to read a little more scripture than normal. So I want you to follow me here. Watch you look at your Bible. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, us as Christians and being uh, members of the body of Shining Light Baptist Church and also of the body of Christ. If you're saved, you are automatically a part of the body of Christ. Now, as a local body, we are members of Shining Light Baptist Church. I am a member of Shining Light Baptist Church. My, my, my body here, my name's on our roll book. Uh, we, we have business we have, that we have to take care of. That, that makes me a member of this church. That does not mean I'm going to heaven. You have to be a member of the body of Christ to know that you're going to heaven. There are people that's a member of the body of Christ, that are a member of the local church, and vice versa. Uh, so tonight, we're going to look at the body. If you are saved, you are a part of the body of Christ. So the, the Bible compares us to the Lord's body. Now, watch this tonight. Look in uh, ch uh, chapter 12, verse 12. Everybody looking at it? I'm going to read it slow, so what? read with me. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members that one body, being many, are one body. So it's Christ. Now, that's what it is. This right here tonight, this right here is my body. And my body has many members. There's a member, 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 there's a member. Uh, there's a member. Uh, all these are members of my body. Now the Bible said that we're just like that. We're the body of Christ and we are different members of that body. Now obviously, you understand that. You understand that everybody is not the same. Matter of fact, nobody's the same. As a matter of fact, we all have something different that we can do in the body of Christ and we all do have something that we can do. There is no such thing as a member of the body of the church that's not important. People say, well, I just don't get to do nothing at the church. I, I, don't, I don't sing. I don't, I don't preach. I, don't, I ain't got no money to give. I just, I'm not important. There, there is no such thing as a part of your body that's not important. See, that little finger right there, you don't, sometimes you don't think about it. The son, I'm playing ball, and I jammed that thigh, I hit it like this. This boy went, bam, pulled it out like that. You'll think about it real quick. And you'll remember how important that little finger is. And, and that you might just be a little finger, but you're a part of the body. You might be the little toe, but you are a part of the body. That's the point I'm going to make tonight. Now, now we're going to read a little bit here now, so stay with me. Watch this. Uh, look at verse number, uh, all the members of that one body... So it's Christ. Look at verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That means every Christian that's really saved has been baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. There is no such thing as a Christian that don't have the Holy Ghost. All these churches around there come to our church and you can get the Holy Ghost. You mean get saved? When you get saved, the Holy Ghost bat puts you into the body of Christ. That's the only way you can get in. So, you get God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You don't get God the Father and then get the Holy Ghost down the road somewhere. You either got all three, you ain't got nine. You know what that means? You got, you, got, you got God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or you don't have either one of them. They're inseparable. Now, look at verse number 14. For the body is not one member. But many. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not the body, is it therefore not of the body? Now my ear, my ear right here. If my ear could say, this is not fair. <laughs> I'm not the eye. I can't see that clock. It says 636. Not right. I'm being, I'm being uh, what do you call it? discriminated against. I'm not, I'm not the, uh, I can't see. And I will say, shut up. You're a part of the body. You're not the eye. The eye could say, not fair. I can't hear. 
Right? That's like church members. You know what? Every church would be greater if everybody just do what they can do. We got a bunch of people in church trying to do stuff they can't do and ain't cut out to do and ain't made to do. If you just find your niche and do what you can do, uh, you'd be dangerous. My eye can't hear and never will. My ear cannot see and never will. My ears got to be happy hearing. My eyes got to be happy seeing. My tongue got to be happy tasting food. My teeth got to be happy chewing. That's what, that's what you got to do. That's, the, that's what this point is. Look here. Uh, and look, look at verse 17. You want to see something? You look at the Bible. This is the most amazing book in the world. Uh, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were a hearing, where were the smelling? Ain't that something? What if tonight you all come here to church and everybody said, where's Brother Danny? He's in there somewhere. He's in there somewhere. He'll be out here in a minute. And all of a sudden, this great big eyeball about this big just come rolling out of that office and rolled up here and just gawked at you. And that's all I was. That's all I was. That's what it said. If the whole body was eye, you couldn't hear nothing. If the whole body was an ear, you couldn't see nothing. Right? Isn't that amazing? That's the most amazing book in the world. What if, what if all you was was a big ear? Now, I know some people that all they are is a big mouth. I bet a lot of them. But now, look. Now, the eyes. And, and the weird thing about this is, uh, the weird thing about it, verse 18 says, God sent members, everyone in their body as it pleased Him. You know, God has put your, has designed our body so that our eyes are back in these little sockets. See how my, see how my cheekbones right here? So if something goes bam like that, it don't hit my eye. I got a bone right here and a bone right here. Ain't that weird? If we evolved, your eye could be right here. If, if evolution was true, your ear could be right there. And, and you just have run something like, what'd you say? <laughs> like, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be rough? And, 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 and your eye would say, I can't see you. I've got to get up here where I can see you. I've got to get up here where I can see you. Like, you have to be stupid. Your eyes are right here where they can see. What if your foot was right here? What if your nose was right? Oh, Lord, let's don't think about that. You know where God puts your nose? God puts your nose right above your mouth so you can smell something before you taste it. See, the Bible, that's what the Bible says. God has set members of the body as it hath pleased him. Now, we are made the image of God, but me and you is not an image of God. Adam and Eve were, and they messed around and lost it. And me and you are fallen, but still somewhat in that image. We don't know how big Adam and Eve was and how good they looked, but I guarantee you, buddy, they looked a lot better than we do. Now, the Bible said, if, if your eye... Look at, look at verse number 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. My head can't see, my head can't look down here and say, you stupid feet, you can't even think. You, don't, you can't even see, you can't even hear. I can't do that. I need my feet. I need my feet to get up here. Don't, don't ever look down at another member of the church and say, man, you can't do this, you can't do that, we're better than you. you no, you're not. Every part of the body is important. As a matter of fact, uh, let's go on here a little bit. Let's go on here. You go on. Uh, uh, verse number 22, Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Our uncomely parts have more abundant comely. What does that mean? Verse 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God had tempered the body together, giving more abundant part to that which lack, on honor to that which lack. Now what does that mean? That means, that means, if, 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 a, if a girl has pretty hair, man, she has the most beautiful hair. God has blessed her with a beautiful head of hair. People have different beliefs on what that might be. Uh, style, hair. You know what the Bible says? That the parts that are pretty really don't have a need. 
Because if you're in the hospital and your liver quits working, it don't matter how pretty your hair is. Right? So God has bestowed more abundant honor on that part. Your liver, I don't exactly know what a liver looks like. But you know, they say, they say if your liver quits working, you can't live. That's why I cut your liver. Uh, you, it's your liver, brother. You can't live without it. It's medical advice from a professional you ought to take to you listen to me. It's true. I, I, it's your, you, now, your liver ain't pretty. People say, oh, she has the most beautiful eyes. Like, well, that's good. But you know ugly eyes can see as good as pretty eyes? That, that beaut- Oh, she has uh, the most beautiful features or whatever, cheekbone. Uh, she's symmetric and all that kind of stuff. Well, that don't help a whole lot when you, one of your lungs ain't working. God puts the more abundant honor on the ugly parts to balance out the body. Good night. There's a million ways my mind goes when I see that. Now, there's a, like your, your eyes, for example. Now, eyes, it don't matter. Uh, <laughs> I, was the, I was in the, uh, I was in the, where's Frankie at? Where you at, Frank? I don't see you. Uh, stand up for a minute. Uh, me and him, we went to the post office the other day. And I, I mean, go, we go now every week, mail radio programs. And we was talking about him. The lady's joking about him. And, then, and she looked at him and she said, yeah, he's got them castle eyes. And I said, <laughs> I'm going to think about this. <laughs> we went out in the car. <laughs> we went out in the car and I said, Frankie, look at me. <laughs> and, we, and, and you know what? Well, I know what she meant. I know what she meant. I was like, did you know that uh, I looked up and only, only like 2% of the world has green eyes? 2%. And like the next, that's the rarest color there is. And blue is the next rarest color, like them baby blues, but somebody with pretty blue eyes. And but you know what that you know what? They say that light colored eyes are are weaker. Brown would be the dominant dominant like like my wife back there, she's my brown eyed girl. That's right. Uh, uh, big brown eyes. And other people have like like me, they say light. Now two percent Two percent of people have green eyes. I thought I don't know where that puts me. Uh, Scottish, Irish, German, my ancestors, evidently, on my mom's side of the family. But did you know something even weirder than that? The weirdest person in the world has red hair and blue eyes. I don't know anybody like that. And I'll tell you something even more random. That's a freak of nature. There ain't nobody left-handed, red hair, and blue eyes. I mean, I ain't never met but one. I ain't going to name no names. But that is rare. Now, the truth is, the truth is, it don't matter one bit if you can't see. It don't matter. People say, I'm going to get me some, like a stupid Marilyn Manson, some fool like that, and get some contacts uh, to block out your eyes and everything. You know, uh, what, a, what a weirdo, man. Just be thankful for what God gave you and, and, and don't worry about it. Uh, so and, 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 and your, your height, your strength, your, your, uh, your, uh, uh, their, their, your, your body in general. It said God gave more important, listen, brother, your liver, your, uh, your kidneys, your lungs, uh, your brain, all that stuff you can't see. And if it was laying right there, you'd say, shoo. See, your cheekbones don't matter. What really matters is if the body's healthy. And, and that's the way church is. Listen to me, y'all. The people in the church that really keep it healthy are usually people who's not even seen. Sort of hidden in the background. Praying. Working, inviting, fasting, working, driving a bus, doing something for God, faithfully working over and over and over, over and over, and that's that's what uh, that's what I'm 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 talking, trying to talk to you about here tonight. Uh, let your your parts of the body that are important. Now I'll say this: I, I know I'm not preaching. Now, I'm just trying to teach you a lesson. Every member has a purpose. How many of y'all know about the term? Uh, what we have in our body called a vestigial organ. Raise your hand. You've heard that. You like vestigial. That means parts of your body that have no purpose. They th- they say, and I'm talking about like your appendix, uh, your um, 
Oh, I don't know. What else? Um, gallbladder, um, wisdom teeth, earlobe, tailbone. They say, you know what they say? They say that these are leftovers from what we used to be millions and millions of years ago. That's what scientists believe. That your tonsils have no purpose and your earlobe, why, why would you even have this? Like, like I reckon, I reckon you sit around and play the earlobes, you are a weird person. Uh, like, like male, I don't mean to say this, I don't mean to talk bad for y'all, but like male nipples. What's the purpose in that? They ain't none, but you sure would look weird without it. And that's the species. The, 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 the kids come from the daddy. Get your mind out of the gutter, you bunch of perds. Listen, uh, stay with me here. Listen, uh, what's the purpose in your earlobe? Ain't none. Ain't no purpose in your earlobe. But you look sort of strange without them. You look like one of them nuts that drill a big hole in them, has a big ring in them about right here. That's a strange looking thing. Now, let's talk, let's talk about that a little bit. Now, the truth is, the truth is that they have found out now that there's no such thing as vestigial. There's actually no such And the, your tailbone helps you sit balanced so you won't fall over. And, and, uh, and, and it's not something you used to be. Your, your tonsils ain't something you used to be and you're evolved out of it. It's not that way at all. They have now found that your appendix are used to reboot your digestive system. And it's a part of heaven. It's a rebooting factory of good, what's called good germs, good kind of germs. Your tailbone serves as a site uh, for sitting and balance with tendons, ligaments, and muscles attached to it. Your tonsils, which they say have no purpose at all, serve to help work with your lymph nodes in you. And a doctor in Edinburgh, Scotland, have proved that as to keep, as to keep uh, kids from swallowing stuff that they shouldn't swallow. So if people say, well, you can have your tonsils took out and you can live fine without it. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. You can lose one eye and live fine without it. That don't mean it didn't have a purpose or it wasn't needed. It means you can't. I can get one of my arms cut off and live without it. That don't mean it wasn't needed or there wasn't a purpose for it. Now, the same way as in a church. Let me say this to you this evening, people. There are no vestigial church members. Amen. There ain't nobody in here that's not important. There ain't nobody in here that don't serve a purpose. There ain't nobody in here that don't have a job. There ain't nobody in here that don't have a ministry. There ain't nobody in here that can't be a blessing to the church. Amen. All right, now just get that through your head. Don't, don't you ever get this through your head as, I'm it. You know, church can't do without me. We'd cut you off if you ain't careful. We'd be fine without you. That's right, brother. Amen. Now, we'd be better with you, but don't ever think we can't do without you. God get us right on through. Amen. Now, let me say something else. When one member suffers, the whole body suffers with it. Oh, that mercy. Uh, we, we all know that. How many of you, uh, oh, let's say, men, anybody, had a kidney stone? Anybody in here ever had a kidney stone? I'll tell you one thing. How many of y'all ever had a baby? If you've ever had a baby, same thing. That's what they say. That's what they say. Uh, and that, that's what they say. I don't know. And I don't know how they know. How they know. Unless a woman had a baby and a kidney stone told them. I don't know. But anyway, Son, I'm telling you one thing. First time I ever had one, I was laying in bed and I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and it felt something like somebody hit me with a baseball bat right there. Bam! Oh, my goodness. Brother. I mean, I was all walking the floor. I mean, brother, you, you talk about pain. Now, the Bible says if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. So when that kidney stone hit me, my mouth didn't say, Hey, Danny, let's go eat some cheesecake. No, my mouth was saying, ow, ow, I'm a dying. You think you will die. Listen, I've seen big, strong men, brother, down on their knees, tears coming down their eyes uh, with a kidney stone. Any kind of pain like that. Now, now a headache, you have migraine headaches. If you have migraine headaches, uh, I think I've had, I've had a few in my life. It's been a long time. Uh, I have normal little headaches a lot. 
but just a little out of my neck where I hurt my shoulder uh, playing ball. But I don't have like bad migraines where you have to lay down in the bed and close all the all the blinds and make it dark in the room and you and you and you get like that. That's bad. That's bad. Now, when you're laying there and you got all the blinds pulled down like that and your head feel like it's going to explode any minute, buddy, that's rough. A headache can be rough. And all the members suffer with it. See, I'm in there and I got the blinds pulled down and my body says, let's go swimming. Uh-uh. We ain't going swimming. I got a bad headache. You're going to sit here and behave till I start feeling better. That's a, every member ought to have the same care for each other. Listen, people, like we got that dear sister little there in that hospital tonight. Like we got somebody, all of us ought to feel for her and care for her and care for others that are hurting in our church. The, every member, every member ought to share some of that, that hurt. That's right. Amen? That's right. If you've ever had, if you've ever had back, if you've ever hurt your back really bad, man, Lord, have mercy, I've hurt mine. A uh, long time ago. And the only way you're going to not hurt your back is if you hurt it regular, unless you've got a degenerate disc or something, is you got to do sit ups. Doctor told me a long time ago, he said, Danny, you got to be strong right here because that holds your back in place. Because you're out of shape, then you go out there and you try to lift something real heavy. Up! It's going to go out like that right there. And it's always after you ain't done nothing in six months as far as hard work. So if you'll work regular and exercise and do sit ups, and I hate sit ups. Lord, mercy, I hate sit-up. I was a sit-up champion in high school. I was. I, I, but I'm telling you, uh, well, I hate sit-ups. But you got to do them in order to keep your back lined up straight, they say. Now, if you ever hurt your back, buddy, I've hurt mine one time in Alabama and had to drive all night home, and I was sitting on, on the car seat like this, driving about eight hours. You can't get comfortable. You This way it hurts. You This way it hurts. You stand up, it hurts. You try to lay down, it hurts. I mean, I, I hurt my back one time, and I we was having youth rally, and I was directing a skit, and I laid on the front row of the pews, laid there, took a microphone, told everybody what to do, because I couldn't walk. And I doped up on goody powders, went ahead and preached the youth rally, and we had a great time. But you know what? When that one part of your body suffers, the whole body suffers with it. If we could just get that through our head. Don't look, somebody in the church is having a hard time. For heaven's sake, don't down them. Don't knock them. Don't put them down. Don't kill them while they're down. Get down there with them and say, hey, I'm going to be right here with you until you get back. Don't go to your friends and call everybody. Did you hear about what so and so did? Did you hear about them? They're a hypocrite. Did you hear about them? I ain't got no confidence in them no more. We all ought to get down with that one member that's hurting and suffering and help them to get back up. You ever played football? You ever play football? Listen, quarterback gets the ball and he goes, hi! He goes back like this right here. He's getting ready to throw it and BAM! He gets run over. What do they call that? A sack or whatever. And knock him down and crush him. And them guys on his team don't say, my goodness, man, what's wrong with you? Come on, what's wrong with you? Get up! Uh-uh, uh-uh. They go down there, they get that guy up, they pat him on the back, they all get together and say, all right, let's go. We'll kill them if they try to do that again. That's where a church ought to be. That's where a church ought to be. When somebody's down, don't kick them. Don't judge each other. You young people, y'all have a, you're going to have a hard time. I've been doing this a long time. And youth groups have a hard time by not judging each other. You may be at one spiritual level. Somebody else may be at another spiritual level. You make sure that you don't get full of yourself and judge somebody for being where you was a year or two ago. Amen? Adults, same way. Adults, same way. Don't cut corners for people you like and condemn people you don't like just because you don't like them. And they do the same sin. You know, if somebody, if it's one of your friends, you'll say, well, that's all right, lay off that man, leave him alone. But somebody, yeah, did you hear about so-and-so? What they've been doing? Listen, y'all, listen. Every member ought to care for the rest of the body. Don't be so hard to please. Like that guy told him about this morning. He's, he's griping, griping, griping. He fussed about everything his wife did. And she said, well, what do you want today? He said, fix me two eggs, one scrambled, one fried. She said, well, I can't never please him. I'll try my best. So she fixed a scrambled egg, the fried egg, and brought it to him. He said, here. He said, I don't like it. She said, what's wrong with that? He said, you scrambled the wrong one. That's the way a lot of church people are. 
You can't make them happy. You can't satisfy them. I don't care, brother, if, if, if every preacher in the world wrapped up and the Apostle Paul was up here, they'd find something wrong with them. If they, it doesn't matter who, was, if angels are singing, they'd find something wrong. If, if you're, you're coming in looking for something wrong in the church, uh, that ain't the way to be, brother. Uh, my, my, my hand looks out for my body. My feet, if somebody gets out to me, my feet's going to look out for my body. Let me tell you, buddy, I'm out of here. If, 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 uh, if, some, if something's coming at me, if a snake's coming at me, I'll take some and go, wham! My hand is looking out for my body. And that's the way we should look out for each other. Not to condemn each other. Not to judge each other. Look, you know what we ought to do every once in a while? And we're going to do that here in a minute. Everybody in here ought to get a big deep breath and just forgive everybody else who's hurt your feelings. All at once. Wipe the slate clean. You say, well, they've been talking about me. Get over it. You've been talking about them. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. You young people, you better love each other. You better accept each other. You better quit bickering. You better quit judging. You better quit critiquing. I know girls in youth group that hate one other girl because that girl can get a boyfriend and she can't. Or boys who think he can get a girlfriend and I can't get, I don't like him. You probably ought to thank God that you ain't got one. Because a boyfriend and girlfriend can be your biggest downfall if you ain't real, real, real careful. Say amen right there. You want me to write your book? I could. I can write you a book full of names like this right here. And hey, this one, 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 this one. That girl got on fire for the Lord. She'd raise her hand. She'd sing the choir. She'd cry. Then she got a boyfriend. She wasn't worth a hoot ever since. That boy was on fire for God. He done real good. Then he got a girlfriend. Down he went. Uh, now I like got right there. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you you the you got to, you got to put up with each other. You got to accept each other. Uh, you can't get this idea of of, of, of nobody does nothing but me. We we all need each other. I don't know about this little guitar over here. I don't even know whose it is. Is this yours, Spencer? This is mine. My good one, good one's at home. Come up here, Frank. Uh, I'll show you what we need to do. Come up, Frankie. Come on up here. Uh, let's let's show you. What's this? A little song me and Frankie sings. Nobody knows but us. And it goes like this. Come on up, Booba. Let me get you up here and help me a minute. All right. You take this mic right here. All right. There you go right there. Okay. All right. I got you. You got me. We got something everybody wants to see. I got you. You got me. We got something everybody wants to see. See? I got him. He got me. We got something everybody wants to see. And that's true. And if everybody in our church would just have that little song, I mean, for all of us, I got you. You got me. We're a family. We're a team. We're not working against each other. We're all fighting to win the game, brother, to win the prize for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's right, brother. We're, uh, you know, uh, 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 don't, don't, don't be so quick to criticize if you see a young girl who does something she shouldn't do. Or boy. You better be careful about that. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They say they got right with camp. Look at what they did. Yeah, you just better be careful right there. You better be careful. The truth is, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. And the truth is, they ain't nobody here would want your life put up on that screen tonight for everybody in this church to see. If any, anybody want to volunteer for that? Somebody stand up and say, I'll let you put my life up there on that screen, Danny Castle, and everything I've said and done thought for a week. Any volunteers? Raise your hand. Okay, then shut up. Who are you pointing to somebody? Did you volunteer, DJ? <laughs> I don't believe that'd be a bad idea. But now, you know what? At least he's honest, and some of y'all keep it hid and covered up real good. 
The truth is, we're all sinners and come short of the glory of God. And every member should help. When, when one of my, when I get uh, sick, whatever, get hurt, uh, man, that night we was playing ball, and boy kicked my finger right there, and son, a cartilage popped out. And I know right then, I've had every one of my fingers done like that. I got scars all over my knuckles from dunking. But you think I'm joking, but I'm not. I do. We used to put a trampoline underneath the goat like this. I let one guy get on the trampoline and play, and let four try to score. It's a fun game. I let four men try to score on one man. He's up there blocking chops this way now. And I busted my knuckles, my head, all, all, over, the, all over the rim. And then that, when that boy hit that thing that time, and that cartilage popped through, I thought, now, if I just break them or something, they'll get better. Ain't nothing you can do for a broke finger. Put a popsicle stick on it and tie it around. Don't waste all of our insurance money and take them to the emergency room, y'all. Put a popsicle stick on there. Another. But now, or a sprain or something like that. Every time one of y'all get a headache, you go to the emergency room and you're costing us a fortune. But uh, nine times out of ten, so I got to go see if it's broke. Let me tell you something, buddy. If it's broke, you'll know it. So if it's broke, you won't have to ask somebody. So look, you put popsicle stick on there and time together. But this time I said, there ain't no popsicle stick gonna fix that. I'm like, I have something done. So I said, come on, Ethan. I said, I pass out the car, you're gonna have to drive. So me and him took off down here to the hospital and I went in there and sat down, blood, blood falling all over the place and everything. They took me in there and that, oh gosh. I laid back in that little, uh, on that table and first thing I heard was a nurse come in, brother Danny, what are you doing in here? <laughs> And it, some girl used to come here to church. And I said, well, I got her playing ball. Yeah, that sounds like it. And, I, and uh, it popped out right here and blood was all over the place. And you could see it white sticking out. It looked like the bone. It might have been bone. I don't know. But it popped out right there. And that doctor, he fooled around there, fooled around there, fooled around there a little bit. And he said, now, are you ready? I said, I reckon. What are you going to do? He said, give me a hand. And they, they have it like that. And Jessica, Jessica, what was her last name? Jessica Leonard uh, was in there. used to come on the bus from Lenore. And he said, now you grab her hand. She grabbed my hand. I, I squeezed as hard as I could. And he took that thing and he went, boom. And it popped back in there. And I went, oh, oh. Lord have mercy, that hurt. It was off. There was not one thought about Pepsi and ice cream. <laughs> Nothing. You think I want to watch a movie right then? Part of my body was hurting, y'all. I don't watch movies anyway. You know that. They'll dumb you down. Movies will dumb you down. You know that. Make you d dumber and dumber unless you're watching something educational. But there was not one thought. You say, well, you going to go play ball. Didn't no, I wasn't going to play ball. I went the next week. <laughs> and I had that and I shot like that. Uh, but I'm telling you, when somebody's hurting in the church... The last thing they need is everybody jump on them. Somebody going through a divorce or something like that. The last thing they need is for you to start judging them. Yeah. Or me. Or us. One of the young people got sin in their life. The last thing they need is for you to get on the phone and go, well, I just heard that so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. That's the last thing they need. Maybe they are sinning. But that ain't the, way, that ain't the answer for it. Get it right with God. I'm saying this and I'm done. Now, things get done when every member works together. If one of my hands is pulling that way, if one of my hands is pulling that way, I ain't going to get much done. But when I, you know how I got, to, you know what I done, how I got this sermon? Four men brought one man to Jesus. Noah and his sons built the ark. The disciples spread out and preached the gospel. Buses run this morning. Drivers drove them. Billy back there drove 100 miles a day. I, I appreciate that, brother. God's going to bless him for that. Uh, and, and all these other drivers. Andy drove this morning. Flat tire on Kelly. Randy drove this morning. Bill uh, has gone out of town for one Sunday a year. And uh, these bus workers and bus workers and, and, and Sandy and, and Kelly and Ethan and Spencer and all the other workers. Listen. They all come, they bring the kids, they got a Sunday school teacher ready to teach them, they got a preacher ready to preach, they got a piano player ready to play, we got a choir ready to sing, and all the members work together, we can get something done. You ain't going to get nothing done, one more pulling this way and one pulling that way. You know what I'm I got this sermon? My heart longed for it. My brain thought it. My eyes read it. 
My fingers wrote it. My feet brought me up here. My heart pumped blood so I could holler and scream. And my lungs give me air to preach. So you see, my lungs, brain, eyes, feet, hands, ear, all work together to preach this sermon tonight. That's what we got there. We got there. So, girls, y'all come on up here and get a get a nice convicting song on everybody forgiving each other. I have no idea what that might be. Tom the Toad, nail it to the cross, something. And I tell you what, let's do. I tell you what, let's do. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. She's playing softly. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And I want you right now to think if there's anybody in the church that you've got hard feelings toward or have had. And I want you right now to say, Lord, forgive me. And Lord, I'm going to go out of my way, get rid of this, get my, my heart right, get my heart right, and I'm going to act different. I'm going to think different. I'm going to think different. You got to get that mind thinking different. Husbands, wives, kids, mamas and daddies, parents. That's all right now. Every one of us. And I'm talking about all y'all that think I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to all of us. Bow your head right now. Ask God, Lord, forgive me for having hard feelings towards so-and-so. And Lord, help me to start all, all over right now. I need my friends. I need my friends. I need my brothers in Christ. I need my sisters in Christ. We don't need to be kicking each other. We all need help tonight. Father, help us tonight. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church. God, forgive me for anything I've said or done that hurt anybody or in any sort of way. God, I pray you'll forgive me. Bless everybody here tonight. I pray, God, that you have mercy upon us. And Lord, bless our church. Cause us to grow and prosper for the glory of God. And help every one of us tonight make a brand new fresh start with this. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand. If you need to come and pray, let's just get in this hall tonight and say, Lord, I want to be the member that you want me to be. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. I want to get in this altar and I want to say, Lord, I want to be the member that you want me to be. Come on. Come on. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, help us tonight. Oh, God, help us tonight. Lord, we need help tonight. Help us, Lord, our attitude to be right. Help us, our heart to be right. God, help us to care about each other. Every little boy. Every little girl. Amen. 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 God help us tonight, Lord. Bless our church. Amen. Lord, bless us tonight. Please, God. Please, God. Help us, oh God, please. Hallelujah. Help me. Thank you, Lord. Help us. Bless our church. Pray that girl. All I have is yours yeah. complete. Hey. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't I go back. I can't go back. I can live for you today. I can live for you today. Amen. 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 Everybody now. There are so many things I wish I could Amen. That's right, everybody. Everybody. So here I am. Use me, Lord. Sing it with us tonight. Give me words to sing and sing. Let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away. Use 
my hands, use my feet. That's right. Amen. You can't go back. You can't go back and do something. You can't go back. But I tell you what you can do. You can start right now and live for the Lord from now on. Ain't nothing stopping you from that. You can't go back and undo the mess you've made, but you can start all over and do better. You can do that. That's what we need to do. All right. Nobody has no hard feelings against nobody, right? All right. All right. If you do, it's your fault. If you do, it's your fault. If you choose, well, you don't know what they've done to me. Don't matter. Don't matter. My little finger hurt me, but I, I, I can't hold it against it. I need that thing. I need it. Amen. All right. Heart's clear. Now, look, uh, men, we're going to have some work done tomorrow evening at 530. And uh, we, we got special jobs that people, that, that people uh, can do. Uh, if you have a skill, if you don't, I need you anyway. Uh, we're going to be burning some stuff and, and working on walls and cabinets and sheetrock and everything. 5.30 tomorrow 